Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to our early afternoon update. I'm Victoria Holmes here in the digital studio. A Rose Hill family lost their home to a fire early this morning. Firefighters responded to a house fire near Magnolia in Warsaw around 4 a.m. The family, three children and two adults, escaped with only the clothes on their backs. The fire was contained after 20 minutes, but everything inside their home was lost in the flames, including their Christmas presents. The Rose Hill Fire Department welcomes donations to help this family. Not on your side reporter Camila Barco will have the full report on our newscast tonight. Governor Roy Cooper signed an order to allow restaurants to sell mixed drinks to go. The order is effective until January 31st, 2021. But there's some confusion because the Sheriff's Association sent a notice saying that this order is against state law. The association says they are not aware of any legal authority that would authorize Cooper or the chair of the ABC Commission to override state law. Anyone caught with any type of alcoholic beverage and anything other than the manufacturer's unopened original container could be charged with a class three misdemeanor. The state health department will have to reorganize part of its vaccine plan. That's because the Centers for Disease Control updated its recommendations since it was first published back in October. The state's vaccine plan has three phases. People in phase 1A who are now being vaccinated include frontline workers like doctors. Next is phase 1B, which includes essential workers like grocery clerks and adults with two or more chronic conditions. Now, the CDC recommends vaccinating people who are 75 years or older before adults with chronic conditions. The vaccine plan also differs in a few other phases in defining what types of jobs are deemed essential. The state is expected to update their plan to follow CDC recommendations. We have the links to the state's current vaccine plan as well as the CDC's recommendations on our website. When we come back, possible COVID relief update. But first, a weather update from your first alert meteorologist, Zoe Mintz. Merry Christmas Eve day. Happy Thursday. Good morning, depending on what time you're watching this. But I hope you all soaked up some sunshine yesterday because as you know, we have a first alert weather day in effect today as this cold front is arriving, bringing that chance for some severe weather into this afternoon. This is today at 3.30 p.m. And that's when we're going to be seeing the beginnings of those more severe thunderstorms push into the area. The morning, you should just see a few pop up showers, but nothing severe until the afternoon comes. And then that will persist throughout the evening hours. There's definitely that higher chance between 3 and around 8 or 9 p.m. when that sun sets. But even into those overnight hours, there is still that chance for some severe weather, gusty, damaging winds between 40 and 50 miles an hour, as well as a slight chance of hail and a slight chance of an isolated tornado is not out of the question. So please be cautious. Be wary as you're heading into tonight with all of this rain. But the good news is it's not a very uh, why or it's not going to last all too long. So by Friday, Christmas Day, 7:30 a.m., just a few showers hanging along the outer banks, and then by the day, 10:30 a.m., all pushed offshore, and a lot of sunshine will come out, but colder temperatures. The coldest air mass of the season will be upon us by the time that we head into Christmas Day, and then into the weekend. So be ready to bundle up, but it is not going to be a white Christmas for us. It is much too warm to see any snow. So it's going to be a rainy day, and then a cold Christmas Day, but no snow for us as that high pressure system takes hold and it is going to be windy as well by the time that we head into tomorrow. Today though, temperature is near 70 degrees. Like I said, get out early if you can before the stronger storms push into the area and you are going to see that heavy rain persist all throughout the afternoon with wind gusts over 30 miles an hour and that will last throughout the night tonight. But once that cold front actually pushes through, we're no longer going to see those warm temperatures, none of that moisture infiltrating the area like we saw today. So tonight temperatures will dip down to the mid to upper 30s, low 40s, and as we head into tomorrow, they're really not going to get much warmer because of that really cold air mass that we see that's going to be continuing throughout the area into the weekend. But as you know, eastern North Carolina, we just have a crazy roller coaster of weather. So 70 degrees today, 40 degrees by Christmas, 
37 by Saturday and then back up to 50, 59 up to near 60 degrees by the start of the work week. So it is not going to be a cold snap that lasts too long, but definitely grab your umbrella today and try to soak up some sunshine as you head into next week. And as it is, we know Christmas tomorrow. It, we do have the short end of the stick, unfortunately, here in eastern North Carolina, especially when it comes to severe weather. It's really just centered around eastern North Carolina. So please be cautious heading into today. Definitely grab your umbrella, but Merry Christmas Eve to you all, and I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. We have a possible timeline for COVID relief, but first, a Greensboro mom's social media posts to get rid of some of her kids' unused toys created a giving circle that has exploded over the last couple of days. Our sister station, Raleigh, has more. Like, if anybody needs anything, just yeah, yeah. come and get it. Come get what you need. This is the post Maurice Stark shared in her next door group three days ago. She was in search of a family who could not make Christmas happen on their own. That snowballed into this. People posting about items they had, joining Sparks and helping those in need. Other people, lots of people from the community just wanted to join and they wanted to give too. So now we're here. Tuesday, she set up many of the donated items on a grassy spot outside of the big lots on Battleground Avenue. Everything here is free. I couldn't handle just from my living room. Malia Brimley and her son Stephen showed up thankful for the holiday help. Hard, a lot, Work, not working, barely being able to pay bills. It's just hard. They picked out presents for the other kids in their family, knowing if Starks didn't do this, they may not have anything under the tree. We just been sticking together, praying as a family, trying to make it through it. It's awfully sweet of you guys to do this. Is this just a personal thing? Yeah, it, it just started God with... Bless you. As families picked out items, car after car drove up and drivers dropped off bags and bags of books, games, clothes and toys. They're still coming up and donating, which is so great. I really appreciate them. They, they will be blessed. I just think this year has been so hard on so many people. And it doesn't matter who you are, it's been hard. Despite the struggles, those women are smiling, knowing their kids will be too. They're going to be so happy. The tree will be lit up and there's going to be some presents under there. The true meaning of Christmas created with a simple social media post. I'm really proud of the pull together from the community. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's what we need. It's really what we need. Everyone needs to come together. House Republicans blocked Democrats' efforts to push a $2,000 stimulus check. Congress agreed to a COVID relief bill earlier this week, which included a $600 stimulus payment. When the bill arrived on President Trump's desk, he vetoed it and wanted the check to increase to $2,000. The bill was then pushed back to the House to be voted on, with House Democrats supporting President Trump's request. They tried pushing this payment request through a tactic called unanimous consent, but some House Republicans were not there to vote due to holiday leave or vacation. And the Republicans who were there said they would not agree to pass it because not every Everyone and their party was there. That means they will revisit the bill on Monday for a formal vote. Thank you for tuning in to our early afternoon update. I'm Victoria Holmes here in the digital studio.